Yo, what up? It's your boy Scalibur Zero, aka your personal music supervisor, aka the music producer you can grow with. And today in this video, I'm excited to show you exactly how you can turn your type beats into TV placements. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Please be sure to subscribe. Also, I want to thank everybody for getting me to 1K. We got here together. I appreciate everybody who's been a part of the journey so far, especially in the Discord community where we're growing together, helping each other out. And as a token of my gratitude, I want to give a 50% off discount on my course. That's all the plugging I'm going to be doing right now. You can find the code in the description below. Let's get straight into the video and not waste any more time. So what I'm about to do right now is show you my screen and get right into this and basically building a framework for yourself, a system where you can start turning these type beats into TV placements. See, me personally, I come from a background of putting my music on SoundClick, on BeatStars. I was an early adapter on BeatStars. I was putting my beats on there from like 2011 and I wasn't able to really find a lane for myself. I was having trouble getting consistent sales. I would get sales here and there, but never anything really consistent that I could live off of. So I diverted and switched over to sync licensing, focused on that majority of the time and still did the thing with BeatStars. I upload a couple of beats, you know, maybe three to five a month or something. And then I really started to see promise from sync licensing so i'm going to show you an exact system where you can start taking your beats that you're already making for these artists and getting them into these shows it's a high demand right now for people who are making top 40 top you know top 100 billboard type of tracks anybody who's very current whether you're edm pop rock anything like that if you have a style that's very current and up with the times you're in high demand because most of the tv people think that it's cheesy but most of the time it's really outdated and you're the person who can come out there and you know bring that fresh new current sound for these shows so let's get into it all right so what you have in front of you is a flow chart of a system that i think that you can very easily follow if you're a music producer i want to break this down very simply and then i'm going to show you my actual fl studio screen and kind of show you how you can actually put this into effect what you see here is a flow chart of a system that i've created and this is what I basically do. And this is what you can do for yourself and maximize your output when you're sending out music, not only for artists, but as well for sync licensing. So first thing you wanna do is create the beat, obviously. From there, what you're gonna do is take that exact same beat, duplicate the project, and then take out all of the melodies and only use the drums. The reason why is because you cannot get sued for the drums, you can only get sued if you copy the melody. So if you have a track that you submit out to a library exclusively, and then you also sell it to an artist exclusively, you will run into legal issues. So we avoid that by just using the drums and being able to just quickly make a track inspired by the same type of track that you've already made but just using the same drums. From there, you can take that beat, upload it to a website like BeatStars or Airbit or whatever you use, and then take that beat, put it on social media like TikTok, YouTube, etc. On the other side of that, what you do is you make a cue out of the drums. A cue is another word for a track or an instrumental or a, a, a vocal track. Just basically another word for a track, cue. Cue is another word for a track. So what we do is we make a cue out of the drums of that track and then we create a small album. It could be of, you know, one to two, two to 10, about two, anywhere you want, like anywhere you want, whatever you're comfortable with. I usually like to send like two to three, maybe up, sometimes even up to 10 tracks for an album of the same style of track. So if I make a drill album, I'm gonna make sure that album has a consistent sound. And then that way when I'm sending it out, which is the next step, sending it out to a music library for a sync placement, maximizing the amount of placements I get because people who are looking for one type of sound usually that is very generic, like let's say trap drama beat, they're gonna be looking for more tracks in that same style. So you can become that source of music for that music library or that for that TV show. So if you don't know what a music library is, I broke this down in my other videos as you probably have seen, but if not, I'll go over it real quickly. A music library is basically going to be the middleman between you and the show. The music library is who you're working with. They have a full catalog, which they're servicing to the TV show or the production company, and they have a deal with them. And that way you're able to send your music to them. And then they're doing all the legwork for you and easily getting your music out there. This is gonna be able to help you maximize your time and quickly go out there and work at your own pace. So what you're gonna be doing basically simply is taking that beat, duplicating the project drums, making a cue out of it, uploading that beat to BeatStars, uploading it to social media, and then creating a small album of two to 10 tracks, and then sending that track, those tracks out to your music library of choice. Also, another thing that you can do that will really help you is save the templates that you create. So say that you make a drama track, 
that's a trap beat, right? If you don't know what drama and music library is, like I said, I have other videos that you can see. I'll put it in the description below. That way you can easily reference in the future. I don't want to take too much time going over that. But save that track as a template. And then that way in the future, you can just use, delete all the melodies, delete even delete the drums if you want to, use the same drums, whatever you want. Just keep the actual sounds and then make a beat out of those sounds and then speed up your pace. You can make two to three tracks, three to five tracks of the same sounds, almost sometimes even the same drums, depending on what type of tracks you're making and get away with it and maximize your placements. I've done that before where I've had two or three tracks with the same exact drum pattern. I maybe switched up the BPM, made a different style of track, and I was able to maximize and get multiple placements off those tracks. That's really gonna help you with your workflow. That way you're able to push out as much tracks as possible. Um, also, another thing is export your midis, whether if it's a clap, a hi-hat, whatever, save it to the side, send it out to, you know, your friends, send it out to uh, your customers, your producer friends who are, you know, customers or whatever, make a sale off of it by making a little midi kit for yourself. Every time you make a track, do this for yourself. That way you're creating these multiple streams of revenue. This is the whole scenario here that you, we're putting on the screen right now. You're creating a track that's being used for an artist. You're creating a track that's being used for sync and you're creating those little templates and those little mini files for yourself that's going to be able to use as another stream of revenue for your producer customers. Also, say you have beats that are sitting on your hard drive that you have not used for a long time. You can use this same exact system. Say you have a beat that's on BeatStars that has never been used, has never been leased, it hasn't been sold exclusively, it's been sitting on your, you know, your catalog for about two to three years, there's been no home for it, nobody has really used it. You can take that track off of your BeatStars and start submitting it and adding it to these little albums and sitting out to a music library all right very quickly let me go into fl studio right now and show you how that translates break this down for you even more that way you can get a visual idea of how this goes so this is going to be kind of backwards this is a cue that i already made that was for a tv placement but say i wanted to turn this into a track and make it for a beat for an artist what i would do is i would save this track as a new track and you can name it whatever you want and then from there what i would do is i would delete all of these little patterns right here and those are all of the melody patterns. So I already have the track right here already ready now. So the entire track is ready for me to make a beat out of. And I just make a quick beat using the same, and we still have the same instruments here. So I can use that same organ. I can use that same piano. I can use the same violin. I can use the same heart bell. All of the same sounds, but with different melodies over the same exact drums. And say I really did want to get into trouble with copyright infringement, which you really won't with drums, as long as there's no melodic elements to it. I would just speed up or slow down the BPM depending on how I felt. A good way to help you uh, kind of make beats if you're trying to figure out, you know, if you made a beat like this and you're like, dang, I don't know how to really take this into another direction. Change around the, D the BPM, start with your tempo and then work on everything else. Work on the melody and then boom. All you gotta do right now is add a melody to this. Um, I would take out that 808 pattern too. That way I'm not, you know, like I said, anything melodic. That way I'm not getting into any trouble and just making a beat out of this drum pattern, changing the 808s, adding different melodies on top of this very simply, very easily, or maybe even hitting up a homie that is a producer who already has loops, throwing his loop over this, reaching out to the music library, splitting that percentage with that producer, but that's just a method you can use to really speed up your workflow. You can break this down very simply for yourself. Like I said, this is very applicable. So there you have it, a very simple step-by-step -step process what you can do to start maximizing your music and turning your music into TV placements and also creating a lane for yourself while still doing a beat selling route online. If you found value in this video, please be sure to join the community. We would love to have you join the Discord community. Also feel free to subscribe and like if that's something you want to do. And like I said before, I have a discount for 50% off on my course that's going to be lasting until the end of the month. The code is going to be in the description below or on your screen. Or if you're a person who doesn't really have the budget for or anything as far as paying, but you still want to learn more about sync licensing, I do have a playlist in the description below that you can easily follow, or you can join us on Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and submit your beats for the live TV placement be critique. This is your boy Excalibur Zero, your personal music supervisor, aka the music producer you can grow with. And we out. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Behold the sword of power, the sword of power, the sword of power.